Hi, I'm Charlotte, and I would like to introduce you to the Mindset Learn series of lessons on poetry. We have made this guide for you, the teacher. In it, we will tell you what the series is about and how it links to the curriculum, and we'll offer you some ideas for how you might use it with your learners. We hope you will find this teacher guide helpful, and we suggest that you have pencil and paper ready so that you can make notes as you watch. These lessons are suitable for learners in the FET band. You may choose to use these lessons with grade 10, 11 or 12 learners, depending on the competence of your learners and the purpose for which you are choosing the lessons. The lessons in this series deal with concepts such as rhyme, rhythm, word choice and imagery. Whilst these features can be found in all types of poetry, we have tried to use contemporary South African poems as our examples. We have also interviewed South African poets about their poetry. There are seven lessons in this series. Meaning shaped by rhyme, meaning shaped by rhythm, meaning shaped by punctuation, verse form, shape, word choice and imagery. Lessons in this series all address learning outcome 2, reading and viewing. It will assist learners in achieving a range of assessment standards within this outcome, including being able to do the following. Explore and explain key features of texts and how they contribute to meaning. And in terms of poetry, be able to recognize that verse and stanza forms, rhyme, rhythm and punctuation affect meaning. and explain how word choices, imagery and sound devices shape mood, meaning and theme. The learning outcome and particular assessment standards for each lesson are clearly stated at the beginning of each video lesson. In addition to this, the lesson outcomes, which are directly linked to these, are also clearly stated in each video. As a teacher, you may find it difficult to convince your learners that studying poetry can be enjoyable and relevant to their lives. Learners don't think that people still write poems, and many of the poems which they have read do not describe experiences that they are familiar with. Our aim in this series of lessons is to change these perceptions. To do this, we have interviewed contemporary South African poets. These poets have written about topics that young people know about and are interested in. Hopefully, these poets will help to convince learners that writing and reading poetry can be rewarding and fulfilling. We also hope that learners will enjoy the poems that we discuss in the lessons and that they will be able to relate to them. Our second aim in this series of lessons is to teach learners about various poetic techniques and devices such as rhyme, rhythm, word choice and imagery and how these contribute to the meaning of a poem. After watching these lessons, learners should be able to identify and discuss these devices as they appear in other poems. To ensure that learners have understood the definitions and concepts that are taught in these lessons, it would be useful to get them to identify the same poetic devices in other poems. You should also then get them to try and explain how the device contributes to the meaning of the poem. If you choose to use modern South African poetry for this, you may find that your learners are more enthusiastic about studying poetry and that they are more likely to understand what the poems are about. If possible, you will find it useful to watch the videos by yourself before you show them to your learners. This will enable you to make notes of places to stop the video and ask questions or have a discussion. It will also allow you to see when and how you could best incorporate the video lessons into your learning program. You could also think of activities you could do with your learners before or after watching the videos. To get learners interested in these lessons and to keep them involved, you will find it useful to get them to do the tasks and activities presented in the lesson. These tasks are linked to the learning outcomes given in the lessons and to at least one assessment standard in the curriculum policy. Completing the tasks will give both you and your learners evidence of how well they have achieved the lesson outcomes. 
The tasks can also be used as part of a learner's record of progress towards the assessment standards for each grade. Every so often, during the lessons, we have included a pause icon, marked by this image. The pause indicates a good place to stop the video and get your learners to complete a quick activity or have a discussion about something. Obviously, you don't have to stop the lesson at every pause, but should you choose to use them, you will find that they help to get learners involved and keep them paying attention. Now let's have a more detailed look at the lessons in the series and how you can use them in your classroom. The first lesson explores how meaning is shaped by rhyme. In the lesson, we also interview a poet. Prior to showing this lesson, you may want to ask your learners what kind of person comes to mind when they visualize a poet. Jot down their suggestions on the blackboard. After you have watched the lesson, ask them how their stereotypes of a poet differed from the poet who was interviewed in the lesson. This will help them to realize that poets are not necessarily the type of people they imagined. This lesson teaches the basic concepts of rhyme, rhyme scheme and syllables and discusses a poem called Mad Poem 16 by Mbongeni Kumalo. After watching this lesson, you may want to find another similar poem with a distinctive rhyme scheme for learners to identify and comment on. In the second lesson, we look at how the meaning of a poem is shaped by rhythm. In this lesson, we use drums and drumming to illustrate how rhythm works in poetry. As a fun exercise, and one that will encourage learners to see how rhythm works, you may want to try this activity after viewing the lesson. Divide learners into groups and get them to select a poem from an anthology to perform for the class. As part of their performance, they should illustrate the rhythm of the poem using clapping, clicking, stamping or homemade instruments. Ideally, the poem should be one that has a strong rhythm, so you may want to get learners to show you which poem they have chosen prior to them rehearsing it. After the performances, have a class discussion on how the rhythm added to their understanding and enjoyment of the poems. The third lesson in this series examines how meaning is shaped by punctuation. In this lesson, we discuss the punctuation in an extract from the poem Mountain Line by D. H. Lawrence. To illustrate how important punctuation can be in a poem, you might want to try the following activity prior to showing the lesson. Find a copy of the poem Mountain Line. Rewrite each stanza of the poem without any punctuation on a piece of card. Divide the class into groups and give each group a stanza to work with. The group should try to work out what punctuation has been removed. It is not important that learners guess which punctuation marks have been left out correctly. What is important is that they realize how the punctuation of a poem can change its meaning and rhythm. After your class has watched the lesson, you may want to show them a complete copy of the poem, Mountain Line, so that they can see where the extract discussed in the lesson comes from. As an extension activity, learners can also examine the punctuation used in the balance of the poem. Lesson 4 considers different verse forms and how these contribute to the meaning of poems. In this lesson, we don't look at modern poetry, instead we look at a sonnet. Our reason for doing this is that sonnets have a very strict and formal structure, and different parts of the poet's argument are given in different parts of the sonnet. I would encourage you to get learners to complete the task at the end of the lesson, which involves commenting on the verse form of other sonnets. This will ensure that the learners have really understood the lesson and that they can work out how the verse form of a sonnet works on their own. Whilst it is important that learners are familiar with terminology such as quatrain and sestet, in terms of the assessment standards the most important skill learners should be able to demonstrate is the ability to comment on how the verse form contributes to the meaning of the poem. In this lesson, we look at poems that have different shapes and how these shapes add to the meaning of the poem. Not all poems are written in a specific shape, but those that are, are not only interesting to read, but also fun to look at. 
In this lesson, we look at some examples and we discuss how the special shape of the poem helps the poet to convey meaning. As each poem is shown in the lesson, you may want to pause the tape to enable learners to quickly discuss what they think the shape is doing before continuing with the lesson. This will encourage them to think about the shape and its meaning for themselves, without simply relying on the presenter to give an explanation. If you decide to get your class to complete the task of creating their own shape poems, you may want to consider not making this part of a formal assessment. Instead, use this as an opportunity to allow your learners to have fun with words and poetry and use their poems to decorate your classroom. In this lesson, we learn about word choice in poetry and how this contributes to the meaning of a poem. Prior to showing this lesson to your class, you may want to complete the following activity with your learners. Divide learners into groups. Give each group one stanza of the poem Adriansboort. Get each group to choose a few words from the extract and to explain to the rest of the class why they think these words were used. When you show the lesson, learners can compare their explanations to those given in the lesson. Although, at this point you should remind learners that there is never only one interpretation of a poem. In this lesson, the imagery used in a range of South African poems is discussed. You may want to pause the tape after the text of some of the poems is given to allow learners to think about the imagery for themselves. This will help them to develop the ability to picture what the poet is describing without waiting to be given the presenter's explanation. After the lesson, you may want to choose other poems with strong imagery for learners to discuss. As an alternative to providing a verbal explanation of the images used, learners could be encouraged to illustrate what pictures a poem creates in their minds through a drawing, painting or making a collage. We hope that you enjoy using this series of lessons on poetry in your classroom. The series cannot replace learners discussing a range of poems and discussing many features within each poem. However, the lesson should help you to get your learners interested in poetry. They should also help learners to understand some basic poetic devices that are used in many poems. If you would like more information about using these lessons or lesson notes for each lesson, please refer to our website at www.mindset.co.za. Goodbye.